Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent HD Show, where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today, um, it almost feels like I'm uh, being held at gunpoint, because today we're going to be playing a Nilfgaard status deck that I aptly named Status Quo. So uh, let's dive into the deck builder immediately and not waste any more time. So the status quo deck is actually a deck that I've been working on for quite a while now. I've been experimenting this with this for quite some time and the uh, recent patch didn't really change too much about this deck. I swapped out a few cards, but those are not really too relevant for this video. Um, I think the main ones here are the Alba Pikemen, which now give you extra bleeding. What this deck does really well is um, lock down your opponent's units and even just take care of them in one go and then benefiting from all those status effects that you're tossing around with of course the Thirsty Dames and other cards. Um, I'm going to be going through each and every single card in this deck one by one uh, to explain the combos and the abilities of the cards. But if you're not interested in that, you can also just find this deck in the description down below. There's a link to the Play Grant website where you can import this deck into your own game whenever you like. Don't forget to upvote it there as well because every bit of feedback is appreciated. And you can use the timeline down below this video to skip right to the example matches if you know what all these cards do. For anybody still here, let's get cracking. So first up we have the Van Morlehem Hunter, 3 power and 1 armor for 4 provisions and has a double deploy ability. Either you give an enemy unit bleeding for 2 turns, bleeding counts as a status effect, so that uh, is already very handy, but usually we're going to be putting this card on the ranged row to lock an enemy unit. There's plenty of engine cards flying around in this meta, so uh, the hunter will be able to find his mark. Next up we have the servants, the Van Morlehem servants, which are human, no vampires, but four power for four provisions and on deploy you copy all statuses on an enemy unit and copy them to another unit. You also boost yourself by the number of statuses that you copied. So very powerful card, especially for four provisions, this card should not be underestimated. Next up, the Alba Pikeman that I was talking about. So three power for five provisions and has the new flanking keyword. Flanking means that if this unit is next to only one card, so not two cards, um, you have an extra uh, ability. If it's on the melee row, you uh, double trigger your end of turn ability on the card. So all these cards, all flanking cards have an end of turn ability. Uh, if you're on the range row, it will gain an armor point at the end of the turn instead if it is flanking. What this card actually does is give an enemy unit bleeding for one turn for every time you use the order ability. It ends, uh, well, it starts out with zero charges, but at the end of the turn, you gain one charge. Remember, if it's flanking, it will gain two charges. So flanking means... Um, in this case specifically, on the melee row, um, next to only one unit. If this unit has at least three charges, you will gain one armor instead, and that would be two armor if um, you're on the uh, melee row and on the ranged row as well. So at the, if you have three charges or more, uh, the, uh, the end of turn ability will always be uh, two armor if you're flanking. Then of course we have the Thirsty Dame, Vampire, four power for five provisions, and whenever an enemy unit receives a status positive or negative, boost yourself by one. This can go up really, really quickly, and also takes into account multiple statuses being moved from the Van Morlehem. Uh, servant, so very very cool card indeed. Then we have the hunting pack, 4 power for 5 provisions and on deploy if an enemy unit has status, summon all copies of this unit from your deck to this row. So basically an 8 point card on deploy with a little bit of tinning because uh, yeah there will always be a unit with a status on the other side of the board, either you give that unit the status or it has something of its own already because doomed immunity veil also are statuses of course now we have double impera enforces another uh, soldier card four power and one armor for five provisions and on order you damage an enemy unit by one and it starts with one charge if you kill something with the damage you gain a point of armor and whenever an enemy unit gains spying you gain one charge so if you kill stuff, you get more powerful. And of course, for every spine that we apply, this unit will get more charges. Then we have the Rot Tosser, uh, another, uh, well, not a soldier. It's a siege engine uh, where we toss some dead cows over <laughs> to our opponent's side of the board. Five power for five provisions and on deploy. If you put him on the ranged row, you spawn and play a cow carcass, which is a one power spying unit that uh, at the end of the turn of your opponent's, uh, will destroy itself and poison the units that it was next to. So basically a diseased cow um, 
yeah, exploding on your uh, your opponent's side of the board. Then we have Roderick of Duntine, a uh, very good tutor card. Uh, two power for six provisions is disloyal, so you play this card on your opponent's side of the board. And then you look at two random gold cards from your deck and play one of them. Uh, so basically a gold tutor where you give your opponents two points in return. Then we have Vanamar, three power and for six provisions and on deploy if you put them on the range road you destroy a locked enemy unit. We have plenty of locks in our deck so that will definitely not be a problem. But remember that if you play Roderick that Vanamar could pop out and um, you will be forced to destroy a locked unit. So if there's none on the board it could break. Then we have Fergus Var Emrys, um, the uh, father of Emir, seven power for six provisions and on deploy you give an enemy unit spying but we have devotion so we give three enemy units spying instead so very very good indeed three statuses in one go there's spying statuses so the enforcers are boosted um our thirsty dames are boosted so uh very very nice indeed then we have just a jolly fellow five power for seven provisions for the van morlehem scup bearer an assimilate unit which will not be triggering too often but will trigger it a little bit uh, also has a double um, deploy ability, either you poison a unit if you put them on the melee row or you purify a unit if you put them on the range row. So this is your purify, or purify option as well to get rid of defenders. There's another option that we can use for that, uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. And then we have Cadaverine. Um, Cadaverine is uh, not going to trigger assimilate because we're spawning, but Cadaverine poisons an enemy unit and then spawn a base copy of it on the opposite row. If that's a powerful... Um, engine card this could be very good it applies the status so i think it definitely has a place in this deck now we have treason basically the other way around so we give spying to an enemy unit and damage the adjacent units to that unit by the power of the unit that we just gave spying to so if it's a seven power unit uh, we will do seven damage to the unit to the left of it and to the right of it uh, possibly killing up to two units if we play this correctly. Then we have Philippe van Morlehem, six power for eight provisions and probably one of the stronger cards in this deck on deploy. If you control a vampire you gain zeal on the order ability and the order ability always allows you to give a status to an enemy unit. If it has no statuses you give doomed to that unit, if it already has a status you lock it instead and if it has more than one status you poison it instead. So this card can basically poison one unit per turn because it has a cooldown of one turn very powerful unit is that if this is not answered this uh, card alone will wreck your opponent's board uh, the only thing that you need to be careful about if the unit that you're targeting is just locked if it has no other status effects on it then this uh, ability will do nothing on that card because it will just try to lock it again um, so you won't get a status and you won't Put it to the next stage of disability, so basically useless. Then we have Vincent van Morlehem, uh, my namesake, a tree power for 10 provisions, and on deploy you destroy an enemy unit with a status, so our tall removal card without having to uh, poison anything. Um, it's very good. Uh, you can take out a unit with Veil with this, uh, because Veil is a status effect on its own. You can take care of a uh, defender with this. Uh, the very very versatile card. Then Joachim the Wet is also in this deck for power for 10 provisions is disloyal so we play this on our opponent's side of the board and on deploy you play the top non-disloyal unit from your own deck and boost it by 8. So basically giving you a unit from your deck and uh, 4 points on top of that because of course you give your opponents 4 so you basically have a net total of 4 points extra. Uh, we can also double play this card with Coup de Grasse. So Coup de Grasse is an echo card that we can also play twice. We get that back in the next round. You damage an enemy unit by three and if you kill it or the target that you're, uh, well, the, the unit that you're targeting has spying, you spawn and play a base copy of it. So this will trigger Assimilate um, and it's one of the most powerful cards in this deck because Joachim can be played twice, Roderick can be played twice or any of your opponent's tough units that also had spying that you gave to earlier. And then Emir Varemris himself, the Emperor himself, four power and two armor for 13 provisions. His ability has been expanded as well, because on deploy, you now play a bronze soldier or aristocrat from your hand and then draw a card instead of just, uh, you know, tossing away something and drawing a card. Um, and from that point onwards, he also has a passive ability that whenever your opponent plays a unit, you give it spying automatically. Uh, on order you can also seize a one power enemy unit with spying and that order unit uh, order ability is refreshed at the end of your turn so you can uh, basically get two points on top of that and a spying hit 
uh, a spying assignment uh, for every single turn. So very powerful card, especially in the status heavy deck. And then of course we're uh, using statuses so the scenario card cannot be omitted. Masquerade Ball, uh, 14 provisions which is very hefty but we get a lot for that in return. On the ploy we get a Thirsty Dame right next to it. We've talked about Thirsty Dame already. And then the next two chapters will trigger if you play another Aristocrat on your side of the field. And uh, you will always get a Fangs of the Empire after that, which just gives an enemy unit poison. Uh, so tall removal, 12 points and an engine card. This is still one of the best scenario cards in the game. And it's uh, not my favorite card if I play against it, but for just this once, I'm gonna go for it. A stratagem is the color, so we lock an enemy unit and damage it by three. Makes sense within this deck as well, I think. And then our leader ability is imprisonment, where we can also lock an enemy unit and damage it by three. And we can do that two times. So we always have a way of locking units. With that being said, let's head into a couple of example matches to show off how powerful this deck can actually be. So our first matchup, while it's once again storming outside, is Onslaught. So that is actually pretty okay. Um, we are, of course, going to get damaged quite a bit, but there's also going to be plenty of cards that we can damage back. Um, there's a few cards that will be useless. I think, for example, the Alba Pikeman will not be able to do too much. Um, so I'm not even going to bother with them. They're going to be more trouble than they're worth. Uh, other than that, there's some spying with Fergus. Uh, but I think it might be better to get rid of... I don't have a second poison, so Cadaverine might not be that useful. Yeah, let's start with this. We get the Uncrate Longship first. Um, I don't have a separate lock here. Um, so I would even want to just start with a lock there. Yeah, I'm gonna do just that. Uh, I'm gonna lock the longship and we're gonna go for a batch of Empera and Forces and I'm gonna hit the Uncreed longship while we're at it because I don't want to waste those charges. And then we have Coral that will be 4 damage on the Empera and Forces in total because of the, uh, the discard damage. Uh, that should be it. I'm going to check what I can do. Because uh, I'm going to be able to add more armor on the enforcers in a minute. I'm going to put Roderick on the other side of the board. And see what I can get. I could get Joachim immediately. That's a hefty investment though. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to go all out for this one. Put Joachim on the board as well. And then we get the Hunter which is going to look uh, that means we get two charges, so I'm gonna kill the Uncrate Longship and then start hitting uh, one of the crows here. That should be fine. And the next up we can coup de grace Joachim and get another fancy card out of our deck. And then we get Siri Nova, but I can destroy that whenever I want, so there's no real um, hurry for me to do that. I'm gonna coup de grace Joachim again. That's another spying tag on the other side of the board. And I can... Ooh, I can just purify here. I'm gonna do that. There we go. Purify her. And then we can kill the crow and get another bit of armor on our enforcer. We do need to be careful about um, like some big hitters here. I think the Rotosu would be fine here. Uh, let's start with the hunting pack. I forgot about that one first. So that's just eight points on top of that. So that's uh, basically the same thing that our opponent did. We got hit there. That's a bit of armor because of course this is onslaught. So they gain armor for every uh, unit that we damage, uh, that they damage. I'm gonna put down the Rotosu now. Seems like the better option, because um, I'm going to be able to swap out the poison with something else as well. Uh, so Rotosser in between... Uh, in between these two guys, I think. Ah, it doesn't really matter. Let's put the Rotosser over there. And then we can kill the one Joachim there and get another point of armor. Bit of damage on the Rotosser that we just played. And then we get Hammond. That's just going to move and add bleeding. Uh, okay, that's fine. I do need to be careful with playing Fergus here. Because I don't have too many options to add spying. And I'm going to get Coup de Grasse again later on. 
Uh, but I'm going to do it regardless. I'm going to... Um, so let's put Fergus over here. Add spying to uh, the two units that are poisoned. And then... Uh, Gert. And then I can hit um, the crow here until it's dead. And get a hit on Roderick there as well. There we go. I could have gotten an extra point if I didn't spy um, Hammond there. Okay, two damage there. I could play Philippe, but that seems like a very big risk. Although, it's going to be a good target for them to try and hit. I could move the poison with the... And that's probably the best thing that I can do. I'm going to move the poison from Roach to Hammond. So he's going to die there. That gives me another spying, apparently. That did actually count, so I'm going to hit Roderick there and uh, get an extra point. So that gives us one point in the lead there. That doesn't really do anything, aside from the fact that we're... Ooh, that's good, but that's already out of the way. I can still get out of this, because I'm going to play Philippe now. He's going to get Zeal. And then I can poison Roach, because Roach has two statuses, so this will be a poison, so that's 10 points in one go. So they're either gonna now waste a couple of cards to try and kill Philippe, or they're gonna have to forfeit the round. And they're going for the big hits there. They're gonna have to do that twice, yeah, okay, so that was what I was trying to bait out. And now they're even forced to play another card, so... Ooh, and it's Bjorn. Yeah, okay, that's good. Um, and I'm gonna pass so they don't get Bjorn back. I think they might have overcommitted there. That was a lot of good cards gone. Even though it seems like on our end that's also the case, but I still have Masquerade Ball if I can pull it. Uh, Coup de Grasse first, the Hunter and the Pikeman. Again, the, the Pikeman, I don't see the use of that. And as long as I don't have a spying card, Coup de Gras is basically useless as well. So I'm going to get rid of it and we get Cadaverine. That's good. So it would surprise me if my opponent now starts pushing. Yeah, okay. I think so. I still have a lock in hand. We could even still get Emir in a minute. Um, so I'm just going to play the Hunter here. Not the big guns. And I will be able to play Masquerade Ball. Our opponents will be able to take most of the Thirsty Dames out, I would assume. Oh, we get Vanamar as well. I risk pulling Coup de Grasse, but I'm... I might pull it regardless. With Amir, I might get a Spying anyway. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave it at this, I think. They lost the Leader ability, so the Alba Pikeman might actually be more useful than I think it is. So yeah, let's finish that up. Uh, let's start out with Masquerade Ball. Uh, we'll see what we get. There might be a Korati in there, because uh, Siri Nova limits to 10 provisions and Korati is 10. Get Golden Necker. So that's below 10, right? Yeah. Okay. That's going to be a useless card. So either it... Yeah, they had to kill their own units here. And then the bear... Okay, yeah, that's it's gone. Yeah, okay. We won it. That was a very bad gold necker there. All right, first one down. Next up we have hmm, Squiatel hand boosting. That is always fun. I need to win round one against this because uh, that would mean that we uh, get final say and final say with this is just going to wreck that deck. I'm going to get rid of the second hunting pack so that gives us the combo guaranteed. Um, other than that, we already have Masquerade Ball and Emir. Philippe is going to have to be left for last. Uh, this might actually be interesting treason. Vanamar is locking destruction. I think this might be pretty okay. The only thing that I'm really missing is I don't have a lot of... Sp oh, I do have spying with Emir. Opening play is a bit tough to decide here. I would say start with Emir. Because he will generate uh, extra spying for the uh, enforcers anyway. So I'm going to play Emir with the Enforcers and then draw another Enforcers. That's that's okay, I guess. So yeah, as I said, I want to win round one, so I'm going to be really aggressive here. And then they can do whatever they want in round two, I guess. 
because I want to have that that final say. So there we go. We get a look. I don't have my purify in hand, so the amount of spying will be limited. That is an interesting choice, though, for a first card. So I'm gonna just put Thirsty Dame down, which seems a bit weird, but I think four power is not an easy thing to destroy in that hand boosting deck. Uh, and I'm gonna keep the one damage that I have on the enforcers. So we get a first hand boost there. And there we have the second one. So they're going all out, I'm, I'm presuming. There we go. All three charges used. So that means that we know where the boosts are at the moment. And we get Ren Free immediately. Ren Free hand boosting. That is uh, spawn your stratagem on your melee road. So two stratagems and six damage randomly. Okay. Very aggressive. Um... We might as well follow suit. Um, I'm gonna play Vampire Man. Yes, Philippe Van Mordham is uh, known as Vampire Man. So I'm gonna lock a Renfri there, which gives us an extra boost on the Thirsty Dame. And I could lock something else, but I'm gonna hold off. Because I have Philippe on the board, so as long as he's alive, he will uh, happily use that crossbow of his to uh, just keep firing at the... Um, the dirty square tell on the other side. Dwarven Chariot. Very good one to also lock. Um, so we're gonna lo lock. I'm gonna lock. Just gonna lock. That one. Um, and then I'm gonna hunting pack. And then I'm gonna start poisoning a Renfrey there. I still don't need to use those charges. Hawker supports. So that's extra boosting, and then we get both stratagems and the six damage randomly. That was fine, and this is both hand boosting. That's gonna be a biggie. That's gonna be a biggie. That's fine. We have a load of tall removal. Um, before I use Philippe again, I'm gonna move all those statuses from one unit to the other. Yeah, so I'm just gonna use Van Morlehem's servant. And move everything from Renfrey over to Dorgare. That's going to be three statuses. Um, and then we can poison Dorgare, which is an extra point over there. And that should be fine. I could, I'm going to use the charge now, it's fine. So there you can see the power of the Van Morlehem servant just locked and poisoned a, and doomed a unit in one go and got points for that as well. Ooh. You're a big boy, aren't you? Um, so with that, there's a few things that I can do, but I think I'm gonna lock him. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna lock him. So, lock on Zoltan, um, and then I can kill Renfri with a poison. Uh, I don't really run a risk here, I can kill Zoltan in one go next turn. So I'm just three points ahead, and I really don't want to lose that first round. Now we get the Thirsty Dame down, but we're gonna return the favor. Yeah, we're just gonna return the favor. So Vanamar is gonna be 17 points, so that gives us the advantage back. And then we can just lock one of the Rowdy Dwarves. Then we get Renfri's Gang, which is gonna be... Ooh, that's a lot of points, isn't it? Yeah, I'll do it like that. I'll use Treason now. Um, just to kill. That's 9 points in a Spying. Giving me another charge, I can lock the Renfri's gang and then we can damage another unit here. But I'm gonna have to pass in a minute. They're pushing really well, uh, but I'm refusing to use my leader ability here. Oh, and that's three points. I think I'm still fine. I can use this and then uh, poison Renfri's gang and that's gonna be another seven points in a minute. So do they want to really want to take that bluff? If they take the bluff, I'm boned. But I think they have the, the two hand boost things. And yeah, okay, that's good. That's fine, actually. I don't really mind. Because um, I... Yeah, I just bled them quite nicely there. So I'm just going to stop it there. Okay. Too bad I didn't win round one. They tried to win that with all the cards that they have. Because that was Renfri. Both of the big dwarves. And anything else that was relevant? Yeah, Geralt. So that was a lot of high value cards. Uh, I do need to be careful that I now have enough aristocrats. 
and I don't have any. I'll get rid of the servant first, that's an aristocrat. I'm gonna get rid of the pikeman. Okay, we get two serv- um... Aristocrats. I get two aristocrats. Maxi von Dekar. Okay, I'm just gonna go Joachim right away. Ay, okay. That's fine. That's fine, we're still ahead, which was basically the point. Dwarf Berserker. Okay. I can play Masquerade Ball now. And then we get Bolblatana Archer, which is not gonna do anything. That's fine. Um, locking isn't gonna give me much. So I'm just gonna put Bleeding on the Dwarf Berserker and then Poison Maxi. So that's negating the value of the Berserker. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we still got two leader charges. This should be okay. It's gonna be a, still a big card. I'm assuming it might be Torque. Although Torque is, needs Devotion to stay in your hand, and that's definitely not a Devotion deck. Cadaverine is useless. Could the Cross might be something? Although I don't have a lot of gold cards left. Wait, wait, wait. But I can Fergus this. Okay. Um, so Alba Pikeman first. If that gets destroyed, too bad. It will all depend on what our opponent plays here. Okay, Triss Butterflies, that's good. Because that gives me at least one more turn of leeway. Ooh, I got a bit of an idea there. So I'm almost, almost guaranteed. I'm not guaranteed, actually. Crap. Let's Thirsty Dame this first. I need to get that, um status going. So I'm just gonna lock Triss as well. And that's gonna give me two charges on the pikeman. Then we get Dunka. I can't lock Dunka, I can't give it a status either, but I might be able to purify it. Roderick of Duntine into... Is it better to Coup de Gras? Yes it is. Coup de Gras into Roderick again. Because I get an extra spying tag for that. And then I can Van Morla happen and purify that away. And then I can bleed both of these cards. And lock Dunka. Okay. That's probably the best I could have gone. Warven Chariot is going to give me a lot of spying targets. So that is good. Um, and a lot of bleed targets as well. So I'm just going to bleed these two. And then uh, Fergus into three more status effects, which is going to be this. 31 versus 13. Depends on the size of the torque. Oh, that's just over. Yeah, it is torque. One point ahead. That was ridiculous. Okay, next up we have... Ooh. Ooh. Cool down, Northern Realms. Stockpile. Um, I really... Oh, no, it's mobilization. It's mobilization of all things. Uh, mobilization could take care of the Alba Pikeman, but I could get a couple of charges out of that before that happens. Got a bit of poison. A bit of poison on my blade. I, ah, I'm going to get rid of the Alba Pikeman regardless. Yeah, more focused on the spying this time. So uh, let's try and keep that going. It is siege equipment, though. Spawn a base copy of a bronze allied soldier on its row and boost it by three. I have rarely seen this ability in like quite some time. I'm gonna use the Imperia Enforcer. Uh, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna lock the battering ram and just hit it once with the, the Enforcer so they get the extra armor. So I'm assuming the next one is gonna be... Ooh, Siege! What the f... Okay then. That's a bit... Aggressive. Let's just uh, rot toss that way, I suppose. It's gonna give us an extra charge, and that's something we'll definitely be able to use in a minute. Reinforced ballista on the front row, and they're killing the. Okay, yeah, they're killing the. That's fine. That is fine. I can use Fergus to get enough charges to kill um, the ballista, which is the biggest threat here, I think. And they get another charge. Taking down the Rottos, obviously, because they I think they feel that they're gonna lose out on that. But might as well play Fergus now. Um, we're on the back foot anyway, so it doesn't really matter. 
that we let them keep round one here and that gives us just enough charges to take it out the reinforced ballista and now we got the carro ballista sadly we don't have a lot of extra locks available otherwise i could have pushed this a bit further but i think this is going to be fine uh the one thing that i still want to do is put the hunting pack down um just because of the the thinning that that entails hit on the enforcers another reinforced ballista might as well try and see what i get because regardless i can kill some pretty big things um i'm gonna stop this from getting because i don't think that's a oof. emir or vincent van morlehem then i suppose um and i can kill the battering ram with that uh, other than that, I'm just gonna hit uh, my own Roderick. Still following along, but still not gonna not gonna win this first round. And there goes the Enforcer. Ooh, Dandelion. It's another big gold card gone, and we got reinforcements. Yeah, that's definitely gonna be the end of me in this round. Double tick. Barely any units left. Um, I think that's been fine for round one. I would assume that they... Hmm, do they want to push? I wonder what that lead ability is for. Because you're just adding another soldier on the board. So yeah, I definitely need to invest in those locks. A little bit of poison also won't hurt. I would love Philippe here. I'm going to need to get rid of a defender if that comes to it. So I'm just going to get rid of the servant and there's Philippe. So this is basically a perfect hand. And then we get Mute the Generator. I I think I can go without Masquerade Ball. I still have a couple of Aristocrats in the deck. Not a lot, mind. Two. I'm gonna play Emir into the Thirsty Dame. There we go. And that's gonna automatically give us an extra point on the Thirsty Dame whenever our opponent plays a unit. Which they want to do with the muted generator, so that seems like the perfect combination. To me. Spawn and play. So that's the new uh, garrison here. Ooh, it is Sintrin Royal Guard spam. I'm going to start to do this slowly. Because I think I'm going to be fine. Because this is playing a bronze soldier from your starting deck, so why did it boost? It's five, right, to start, yeah. That's another artifact. And that got spying. And this is boost an allied soldier and all the copies by one and give them one armor. Okay. Do I want to play Masquerade Ball on this? I'm gonna put down Philippe. Because then I'll be able to oppressively apply uh, poisons. Because I can bleed, which is a second status effect. And I can poison every Sintian Royal Guard that comes up. Because it'll get immediately get to... Uh, status effects and that way i don't need to use masquerade ball and i can keep this going as long as i want to and i can even use cadaverine if i need to yeah okay there we go that forced their hand it's an interesting deck to play against by the way i really like this but i think we should have the upper hand we have almost all of our golds left in hand so if i can get joachim and don't get a lot of spying anymore. That's Coup de Grasse. I need Joachim. Otherwise this card is bricked. I can't keep Coup de Grasse. Yeah, I couldn't keep Coup de Grasse. That would have been really stupid. So I can lock twice, but it's probably better to start bleeding on this. Masquerade Ball first. Vile of Forbidden Knowledge. Fine. I can stall a little bit with Alba Pikeman. And I get an extra armor bit because I'm flanking on the range row here. Uh, which I think was the better option. Because I'm not going to get enough units to uh, start working on that. I'm going to play the Cabaret first. Because he gets extra points from Assimilate. Um, so poison and bleeding. I'm going to get an extra charge and an extra bit of armor. So I think one charge per turn is, is not ideal, but it's going to be the better option, I think. And then we got Megascope. Uh, so I'm going to have to bleed first. And then I can poison again with the uh, Fangs of the Empire that's coming up here. There we go. Alright, I'm going to get another poison from 
Masquerade Ball, and then I can poison that one with Cadaverine. So Garrison plays a copy, so there might still be... Okay, I can lock that, but they're gonna get an extra... Yeah. An extra one of those. I can bleed that so it's gone. Although, of course, they can use the file on that. I'm gonna get one more. Yeah, it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna lock Ideana Vulivo. And then poison him. Um, the Centurion Royal Guard, actually. That's gonna be more interesting. Because I need to reduce the amount of Centurion Royal Guards. And there we go. That got rid of the bleeding. But that's also a status effect. So both of my uh, Thirsty Dames get boosted. And then I have final say, so I can just lock the final one. Yeah, I can lock the final Centurion Royal Guard afterwards. It's fine. Yeah, it doesn't really matter what I bleed, so I'm just gonna bleed Queen Adalia. And then Cadaverine, the back one. There we go. I would have had way more points if I had the uh, Bikeman in the front. Uh, but I think this should also be fine. I can get rid of the biggest one at the very end, and I can still bleed for... Yeah, I'm just gonna bleed. Bleeding is more points in this case. Um, I'm not flanking anymore, by the way. Um, oh, okay, there we go. Yeah. I mean, we could have killed that final Centurion Royal Guard, so it didn't really matter. I had the uh, the benefit there anyway, so that was that was a very interesting fight. And with that, I think we've shown off the deck quite enough. Uh, this deck can work against a variety of decks. I think the the biggest counter this deck could have is the uh, Keltalus deck, the Carapace Keltalus deck, uh, because there's too many fails. You can only purify one and then destroy the other with Vincent van Morlehem, but otherwise uh, statuses will not work on those units anymore, so that's going to be an issue. But other than, other than that deck, I don't see a real strong counter against it. Um, I did misplay a little bit against the um, hand boosting deck because I really needed to win round one there. Um, but yeah, um, other than that, we worked out okay with all of these fights, so... Really happy with that. And with that, I'm gonna end this video here. So again, if you wanna use this deck for your own, this status quo deck, you have the link in the description down below. So you can go to the Playground web website, import it from there into your own game and play around with it. So if you have any feedback, let me know as well. You can upvote it there as well. And uh, just put that in the comment section down below if you're uh, aching to give me some feedback or, or any of your uh, co-players as well, of course. Um, and that's it. Thank you for watching the status quo deck guide in this uh, very brand new episode of Quentage. And I'd like to see you all in the new one. Have fun playing with the deck and I'll see you guys next time. Stay nutty. Goodbye. Okay,